In this video, we're going to take a look at how to coach acceleration. It's all well and good knowing that the rear leg in the block should be at an angle of 120 degrees and the front leg at 90 and the torso angle at leaving the blocks at circa 40 degrees. How do you apply that though to the novice sprinter who maybe doesn't have the power to drive out of the blocks? And also, what about the debate around pushing or pulling when you leave the blocks and accelerate? I'm going to answer some of those questions in this video. In this particular training session, I worked with a number of athletes between the ages of 13 and 19, jumpers, multi-eventers and sprinters. And you can see that there's a big diversity between how they generate and apply their forces. I was trying to correct them to get the angles correct, to stay low, to focus on the negative shin angles, etc. when accelerating. However, as you'll see, it wasn't straightforward. Some of them responded differently to the training cues. Let's consider fundamentals. You need to get an accurate, optimized set position in particular, where the hips are above the shoulders. If they're not, then the athlete's going to be rocking back, their weight's going to be backwards, and they're going to move backwards and flip up when they come out of the set position. So getting the weight over the line, arms straight, knee forwards, hip over shoulders is crucial but as you can see some of the athletes weren't able to achieve that with the result as I've said that they flipped up. Okay so what about whether you push or pull coming out of the blocks? If you look at Marcel Lamont Jacobs you'll see very clearly that he's taking his feet away from him. Yes, you still get hip extension, drive through the hip, but the feet are moving quickly away. And many sprinters nowadays use that approach. They don't focus so much on driving the track behind them, rather in trying to move the feet quickly away in front of the hips with a very low heel recovery over the initial first steps. In my experience, I've found that younger athletes can respond Two, taking the feet away in terms of acceleration, perhaps better than pushing. Why so? Well, they don't have the same amount of power as an adult male sprinter may have, for example. So therefore, they're able to more quickly generate force, speed, reaction by taking the feet away from them. Another thing I want to discuss that as a coach, the textbooks may say 90 degree front knee angle in the blocks, for example. However, as I've indicated in the practical world of coaching, that's not always going to be applicable. You've got to use your coach's eye and adjust the training to how you see fit and also come up with your own ideas. So at the moment, in this particular session, we tried to not only push the track, but also kick the feet away at the same time. So we're trying to create a, a very powerful scissor movement between the two limbs. Doing that is going to create more force than just concentrating in one direction, for example. And again, with practice, the young athletes began to pick that up. Another video on the channel, I talked to Jonas Taiwo Dudu, one of the top speed coaches in the world and I learned a lot from him about acceleration. One of the key things that he told me, and it really resonated, was that each athlete should run their own acceleration. Now, we all know that when you accelerate, you're not supposed to run against the person next to you. You hold your position, you keep applying the forces to get yourself up to maximum velocity. But Jonas pointed out that getting to maximum velocity depends very much on the athlete, how they apply force, and even, for example, the length of the race they're running and the time of the training year. So a 60 meters, for example, may have a shorter acceleration phase for the same athlete compared to their acceleration phase in peak season for the 100 meters, for example. So as a coach, you need to be aware of that and adapt and look at their acceleration patterns to optimize them depending on the time of the year and the speed of the athlete and the shape they are in. Well, I hope this overview of acceleration for young athletes will help you and your acceleration and your coaching of acceleration if you are a coach. If you have any specific questions on the subject matter of this video or indeed any of my other ones then do leave a comment in the section below or through my other social media.
and please subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification icon so that you'll be notified as to when I upload new content. I hope your training and your competitions are going well. This video is being filmed in July 2022, a few days before the World Athletic Championships takes place in Oregon. So do enjoy watching the elite athletes in action and do look at their techniques and see what you can learn from them. Potentially, I'll be doing the same and putting that together in a future video. If you're interested in the extremely portable and accurate free lap timing system, then do drop me a message. The system is accurate to two one thousandths of a second and can time end times and split times. Also, do consider becoming a channel member. Every month I post an exclusive video which deep dives into the subject matter which is going to improve you as a long jumper, triple jumper or coach of those events. Coach athlete members get that video and from what I can understand are benefiting from the exclusive content. So head over to the channel's homepage, click on the join button to see what options are available.